we're going to record this session and it will be placed on our new uh, YouTube channel we announced the other day. So we'll add it to it. Just a couple real quick housekeeping things first. If you are on Facebook, we do have a <laughs> Facebook page dedicated to the fast pitch umpires. So if you're in Facebook, just search for Softball Ontario fast pitch umpires. You have to be admitted. Just click say you want in. We'll get you admitted within a couple hours and post lots of good yeah. stuff on there. Um, and we have a new YouTube channel, which is Ontario Fast Pitch Umpires. So if you go to YouTube and search Ontario Fast Pitch Umpires, there's, I think there's only three or four videos on there now, but this will be on there as well. So, um, so welcome to tonight. This is the first time we've done something like this here in Ontario. Uh, really looking forward to it. We've got a great turnout, edging up on 30 people. As you already know, Mitch is going to be our look after this evening. And we'll, and Mitch has made it clear, if you have questions, please ask them as we go along. There's no sense waiting till the end. Um, there is a chat box. If you know Zoom, if you put your cursor at the bottom of the page, you'll see a chat box pop up. You can place your questions there. Unfortunately, I can't see everybody that's here on the screen. I can't see everybody's picture, so I, I can't tell if you're waving your hand. But go to the chat box, and we'll uh, try and keep an eye on that. So just a brief introduction of Mitch. Mitch has been the umpire in chief for seven Canadian championships, lead instructor for two level four softball Canada clinics, and seven blue conventions. He's a proud Ontario, softball Ontario umpire who has received his WBSC certification in 2005. He has worked the U23 World Championships in 2008 and the Men's Championship in 2014. But really, Mitch is probably one of the few umpires in Ontario that really doesn't need an introduction. I think we all know him. And we certainly appreciate you taking the time, Mitch, tonight. Um, to lead us. So I'm going to turn it over to you and away we go. Okay, thanks, uh, Jamie. Thanks, John, much appreciated. And uh, good evening to uh, all of you. And uh, sincerely, thanks for participating in tonight and finding an hour out of your day to, uh, to join me uh, in, in this presentation. Uh, I appreciate it, I really do. Uh, I've done a lot of work on this presentation um, that doesn't, that's no reflection of what it's going to be like, but um, I appreciate you acknowledging the fact that uh, I put some, some work into this uh, in the same way that as an instructor evaluator, you do the same to the umpires that you're working with. So uh, we've run into a little technical difficulty. I had three videos attached to this, and, um, but I won't be able to run them because I guess it's the bandwidth. Uh, in terms of where I'm located, they're just not showing up. Um, and I can get them to show up, but it's it's too timely and we're pressed for time here. Thanks, uh, Jamie, uh, for the information about the questions. Um, I really uh, want to uh, encourage lots of questions. Put it up there, Jamie will interrupt me right away. I'm not gonna keep an eye on things when they pop up. So, so this presentation is about to me, what great instructor evaluators do, and you'll see I'll use that term um, often tonight, instructor evaluators, because they are two different roles, and I want to kind of uh, focus on that. Uh, there's, uh, I'll let you read that on your own there in terms of what we're going to cover uh, tonight, uh, but uh, we are putting an emphasis on understanding the Softball Ontario uh, evaluation along with um, how it fits into uh, a schema of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Um, by the end of it, you'll have a good understanding of the connection between assessment, uh, evaluation, and, and instruction. And uh, the assumption is that uh, if you're doing assessment or evaluation, uh, that you've been selected to do it for a reason and that you are competent uh, in understanding 
the whole impact that your uh, interventions are going to have on these umpires. Uh, we'll talk about how to establish clear expectations uh, for yourself and for the umpire, how to use praise properly, how to, res how to respect our umpires and treat them with uh, dig dignity. And finally, by the end of it, I think you'll 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 understand that uh, the whole piece of assessment evaluation is more important for learning than anything else. So a couple of core values for me so you get an idea of what I believe in. I do believe that all umpires can achieve uh, no doubt about that. Um, if they could do it correctly, they would. There's something lagging. There's some skills that are getting in the way. And our job as instructor evaluators is to help them. Another core belief is that the umpire's professional development is a significant decision. It's a personal decision. And it's a bit of opening yourself up to someone else's interpretation. So as evaluators, we need to acknowledge that. We need to know that. Uh, we are being trusted with giving the umpire some feedback in possibly some sensitive uh, areas that, um, that they may not be comfortable with, but they've asked to hear. And that's quite an honor. Keep in mind, we're always pursuing excellence, not perfection. Uh, perfection is seeking perfection is a source of neurosis, but seeking excellence is a source of inspiration. Uh, sometimes things don't go right when you're evaluating or right on the field, but you know it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that it doesn't go as planned, and that's why we're there to deal with it. Uh, assessment is for learning. When you're assessing an umpire, it's all about them learning. Evaluation, though, very different. It's of learning. So evaluation is the whole piece where you're measuring them against a standard, certain criteria. And it usually results in some kind of a mark, some kind of a rating, some kind of data. So let's take a look at assessment and evaluation. I want you to explore your own thoughts and feelings about this in the next 45 minutes. I really want you to get an idea of where you're at. And when I put this slide together, uh, I, you're going to have a sense of whether you're more into assessment or more into evaluation. There is a difference. So when you're observing somebody and you're helping them to improve and you're being positive and you're being collaborative with them, is that assessment or is that evaluation? When you're scoring somebody, when you're rating them, when you have to fulfill a certain obligation, responsibility, and it pretty much is just you making decisions, is that assessment or evaluation? I want you to think about those two. Because assessment involves observing, improving, being positive, and collaborative. The evaluation piece is that whole scoring where you have to take all that information and give them uh, a rating. And I want to delineate between the two because we use those two terms uh, and, and we're really not giving you know, justice to the whole idea of umpire improvement when we, when we do that. So ask yourself, you know, there's that continuum from being towards, where are you on this continuum? Are you more towards being an instructor or are you more towards being an evaluator? This is something you need to ask yourself and have a good understanding of before you start working with umpires, because you're going to need a skill set that represents and reflects both of those uh, those um, ideas and tasks, being an instructor and an evaluator. So the question really comes down to what kind of a supervisor do you want to be? And when you decide that, you'll hopefully realize that great instructors focus on the people and not so much the programs. And it is all about the people and 
you take a look at these umpires here from the Canadian Championship a couple of years ago. Just beautiful people, just smiling away, representing Softball Canada, representing their provincial programs. You know, how often do you hear a coach say, wow, you know, those umpires have a great program. <laughs> you, you don't hear that stuff. You just say, hey, this person's fantastic. I can relate with them. I can chat with them. You know, and as an evaluator, you have to decide, you know, do you want that umpire walking away from you saying, well, wow, that's softball Ontario program, you know, they've got a great program and they're really strict on this and they want to see this and they want to see that, you know, or do you want that umpire walking away? You know what? I, I like that person and I'll, I'm going to follow what they're telling me to do and I want to show them that I can do it. So. There's quite a lot of power right there, but you know my tenet is that it's always about the people and it's never about the programs in the bottom ends. So again, what kind of supervisor do you want to be? I want to stress that right at the beginning here because you have to decide. Sometimes you need to be a bit of an evaluator. The balance is tipped towards the evaluator, and then sometimes it's tipped towards the instructor. But you have to make that decision. So in this one here, in this uh, image here, we have the umpire. And uh, thanks, Jamie, for sending me that. And again, that umpire is going to become, that's you. You're going to become an instructor evaluator. You're going to be doing evaluations. You decide what kind of a assessor, what kind of evaluator, what kind of a leader you want to be, and it's time to go and practice it. Do as many evaluations as you can, as many assessments as possible, and work on becoming that instructor evaluator. And this is something that I'm still working on. I, 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 every time I get an assignment, um, I'm always kind of thinking about how do I want to go in? How do I want to approach the, the crew? How do I want to approach this individual? Uh, is it time to be an instructor? Is it time to be an evaluator? And unfortunately, in most of my roles, the evaluating piece, you know, I have to make a decision around a level and, and that, and you will too, level one to level two, level three to four. And, um, but that's a, that, that will come as you become comfortable with the assessment piece, collaborating with the umpire, working with the umpire, and then building a relationship to the point where that you can say, all right, you know what, you're ready for your level two, you know? So once again, it's the third tenant that, that uh, a great evaluators do is they focus on the process and not the outcome. And I always tell umpires this when I'm evaluating them. Them, yeah, Usually it's during a season. I know I was working with a couple of umpires uh, in Southern Ontario there in a, in a rec league and um, trying to get through that it's it, it's not a one game performance it's it's a whole process that goes on from the from the from the preseason to the season to the postseason and understanding that uh, and and where it starts so the whole idea here is that you focus on the process and you have a plan around that process and you will start to see results with those who you are supervising so the question is, what processes do you have in place for your role as an instructor evaluator? Exactly what system do you have? When John calls you and asks you to be a UIC or he says, I need five evaluations from this weekend, you have to have a plan. And if you're already designated as that instructor evaluator, your plan will have started before the season and you will have talked to the individuals about what they can expect. 
and the individuals, I see there's one individual here, um, Steve Gallagher, whose name popped up there. Now there, Steve is, is you know, uh, was whenever there's a Canadian championship coming up, he was designated to go. And there's a fellow who's taken control and he's talking to his evaluators and he's getting a sense of what they're looking for. So it works both ways, but you'll find that those evaluators who get the most respect are the ones who connect, establish relationships, and track you through the season. Unfortunately, and this is no slant against softball, any provincial program, but there is a certain amount of evaluations that they like to see done. And this is very important, but behind it is we need to get that feedback to the umpire and help them grow. And by the umpire committee putting, you know, a presentation on like this, this tonight just goes to show that, you know, it's about the people who are involved. And when you're doing your evaluations this season, I hope that's the message that you're getting rather than to go out there and complete a whole bunch of evaluations. Meanwhile, you've deterred a few people from coming back. So what's your plan look like? Here's my plan. I, I uh, first uh, task is to meet with the umpire, talk about the expectations. We'll get into that in a little bit. <clears throat> and when I say expectations, we're talking about exactly what we're looking for, uh, you know, in terms of uh, game management, positioning, uh, strike calls, uh, look for us. Um, sometimes I'll throw in my own look for us. Uh, there are certain things as a supervisor that you like to, to see. Um, you know, for, for example, uh, one of the things that I like to see as a supervisor is that teamwork amongst the umpires in a two umpire system. Um, I, I want to see them talking. Uh, I want to see them communicating on the, so those are the look fors that I, I kind of throw in. Um, and as you know, you know, according to level one, two, and three, there are other look fors that are mandated through the softball Canada manuals. But I think it's fair to say that if, the umpires committee has selected you to be an instructor evaluator, then there is some leeway for you to add in those skill sets or knowledges or attitudes that you feel are important. So once you've met with the umpire and you've talked about these kinds of things, the next thing is the performance on the diamond. And that make sure you outline, you know, we know what the umpire is going to do. They're going to go do their thing out there, but what are you going to do? And we'll talk about that later too, because we all know <laughs> we've all been evaluated and we all know where the uh, umpire in chief, the supervisor, the evaluator is when they come into the ballpark. Uh, and, and, and I kind of have fun watching that as much as I, I, I stopped hiding a long time ago. I just kind of show up and, and they see me, they see me, you know, that type of thing. So there's the performance piece that you need to talk to the umpire about. Uh, you know, be it on the Friday night, be it a week before on a phone call. And then finally, talk to the umpire about the debrief and what the debrief will look like. Uh, specifically, um, you know, when, where, and how you're going to do it. Um, you know, umpires like to have a break, a shower afterwards. Uh, maybe they don't, you're doing it in a parking lot and, you know, there's ball players walking by and, you know, that kind of stuff. Arrange arrange where that needs to happen. And, and don't be afraid to uh, be very clear in what you want to see during that debrief too. Uh, yes, you want to collaborate with the umpire, but you may also have some set um, uh, goals that you want to achieve with that umpire. Like one thing for, for sure is that, you know, you, you, I, I like to, you know, make sure that we're uh, away from the ball diamond, uh, that we're relaxed, that there isn't, you know, back-to-back -back games, those kinds of things. Some umpires want to get it done really fast and on they go. But I say, no, we're going to do it this way. So there is some leeway for you to, to um, uh, decide what you want to include and where you want to go with regards to the debrief. 
And then finally on the debrief, we'll talk about tracking. And this is a responsibility. I believe if you're pointing out what you wanna see the umpire work on and what they're doing well, then you have a responsibility to track and make sure that they are doing what you're, you've asked them to do. So your process may look a little bit different. On this slide, I just put in just to show you um, how, uh, like on, on the previous one here, I, I just kind of used the top down meet perform debrief. But on this one here, uh, you may have a whole different process involved. Um, another example of a process involved. And, 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 and that's entirely up to you. And that needs to suit your, your teaching style, the way you interact with people too. Okay, let's talk a little bit about meeting with the umpire, that pre-evaluation phase, all right? It's important that you collaborate. You, you want to ask them, you know, John, what is it that, you know, you want me to see? Uh, Brian, um, what have you been working on the last couple of years? What do you want me to see? You know, there, will, there are elements of our umpiring that we want people to see. Like I want myself, I want my evaluator to see my plate work. At the same time, I want them to see how I manage the game card. I don't do that well. I never have. Um, I've seen umpires do it well. They pull out that, that game card. It's crisp. They open it up. It flips open. It's me. All the papers come out. The pencil comes out. I can't find the pen down deep in my pocket. And, and now I'm dealing with you know a translation error. And I get my numbers. And I'm like, OK, now I got to go to the screen. And it's out first and then in. And, Oh, I've practiced that for years, you know, and I'm, I continue. So I want my evaluator to know that I've been working on this to get some feedback. So that, that pre-evaluation is very important, that whole collaborative. So the question for you is what aspects do you want feedback on? And as an evaluator, if you don't have any, then you shouldn't be evaluating. <coughs> you gotta have those. <coughs> Okay, so you want to definitely review the areas. We're going to look at the Softball Ontario um, uh, evaluation in a moment. You want to go through those areas so that the umpire understands each section and there's no ambiguity. <coughs> they understand the criteria. Like on the back of the Softball Ontario, there's a criteria, an evaluation form, there's a criteria of moving from one level to another. It's very clearly laid out there. You want to make sure that the umpire understands this. I have a theory of threes. Um, I've learned this through just, you know, my work uh, that, you know, stick to three things to work on. And, and now I'm going to, you know, I'm, I don't want to mislead you here. Uh, usually everything that an umpire does on the field falls into three categories. Their knowledge of the game, their skills of umpiring, and their attitude. So you can stick to those three areas, but within those areas, there are hundreds of different um, performance criteria. And sometimes, depending on the level, you know, you're sticking to three things is a good strategy when you do that pre -eval. Okay, we're going to work on three areas. You know what? We're going to work on your, your positioning. We're going to work on your timing or we're going to look at your, your positioning, we're going to look at your timing, and we're, we're going to look at your, um, your, uh, um, uh, the, your voice, the voice that you have when you're making your calls. Stick to three things. So again, a question for you to think about, what three areas are we assessing and evaluating? Again, knowledge, skills, and attitudes always, but within those three categories, there are hundreds of different performance criteria that you will be looking at. So try to sort it into knowledge, skills, and attitude, and we'll come back to that. Okay, outline the pregame, outline this process to your umpires. Okay? This could be new, especially a level one, level two umpire. This could be very new to them in terms of what they're, they're going through. 
uh, you know, PW weekend, uh, play downs, eliminations. Um, you got your crew on the Friday night there and you'll be doing evaluations on the Sunday, you know, and, you know, is it a, is it a couple of games look at, I find some things and then I'm going to share them or, is it, ah, oh, you were doing this on Friday night, but on Sunday morning, now you're doing this. So you see the growth. That's what the umpire needs to know. That's what you need to talk to them about. Outline the three phases, that pre-game, the game, and the post-game evaluation process. Be very clear with them. I actually, I have a question for you, Mitch. There's, I find there's two types of evaluators, those that want to watch every pitch of the entire game before they'll consider doing an evaluation or an evaluator who may only watch two innings of an umpire um, and do his evaluation based on that. Is there a right way, wrong way? Like how much do you have to actually see an umpire to, to do an evaluation on them? Good question, John. Oh, Jamie, thanks. Uh, appreciate it. Um, is there a good, is there a right or wrong way? Uh, it, for me, there is. Um, Jamie, I watch the game from the beginning to the end. Um, I'll watch three, four innings. Um, I, I, uh, but I will watch a significant amount of, of, of the game. Um, I think I owe that to the uh, um, umpire. Uh, the, the risk, of course, is that if, if you are seeing a, an inning or so and you then go to your debrief you can bet that that umpire knows that you saw one inning uh, and you can also bet that the crew knows that you're looking at one inning and this is why i think it's important to you know uh, give some feedback after every game on the friday night saturday morning type of thing but what you say in the evaluation doesn't have to be what you said on the Friday night and the Saturday morning. Uh, it, 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 it's accumulative. And this, this will have a bigger impact and will certainly develop respect. Um, so I, I, I can't say what's wrong or right. Um, I, I, I think the umpire is gonna have to decide that, but I, I, I do feel that the, the, key, the key is that the crew and that umpire has a sense that you have seen all parts of their game and all parts of their craft. And if you haven't seen that, then you need to be watching more of what they're doing. Did I answer that, Jamie? Yes, yes, you did. Okay, great. Now, this is a little one of mine, too, that I like. Remember I said to you that as an evaluator, you have... Um, you can include certain elements. Well, this is one that I include, and I, I'm gonna read it for you. Ensure the umpire understands that the assessment, the evaluation begins as soon as that umpire arrives at the park, not at the diamond. But once you get out of your car and you're starting to get ready for your game, all that could possibly be included in the evaluation and the assessment. Now, of course, you've had the pre-meeting with them and you've talked about what you're going to look for and that something that comes up during that pre-game may uh during that arrival at the park may not be something you talked about however that is the i don't think luxury is the right word but that is the responsibility that as an evaluator that you have because if you see something if they're being evaluated that weekend and you all know this if if your crews, you meet with your UICs on a Friday night or Saturday morning for the whole day, um, your conduct throughout that whole day um, is, is, is being evaluated. And, and I'm not going to get into what happens after the games are finished and that sort of stuff, but you still are representing Softball Ontario, Softball Canada. Um, so I like umpires to know that it starts as soon as I, as soon as you're at the ball, ball at the ballpark. And then of course, um, make sure that the umpire understands that, you know, there will be a debrief when it will be, 
what it will look like, those kinds of things. Uh, I may agree, make sure they're in agreement of that. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the debrief part, but it needs to be mentioned definitely at that pre-evaluation meeting. I had, a, I had a video here for you um, that I was gonna have you do. I was gonna have you watch a video. Um, uh, this was from a Canadian championship and I wanted you to look at the video and then I wanted you, you to tell me what that umpire, what the conversation was between the umpire and the supervisor prior to the game in terms of what that umpire wanted the supervisor to look for. Unfortunately, I, I, as I said, I can't, I can't run it. But for speed sake sake here, what happened is this umpire had told me that he wasn't happy with the calls that he was making at first base, force calls. And I said, okay, thanks, thanks for telling me that. So I videoed them and then showed him the video afterwards and let him find out um, what it is that he needed to work on just through some questioning. Um, I didn't steal his learning. He 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 watched the video. He says, "Oh yeah, I see it right there. I'm 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 moving when um, I'm tracking the ball, and I, I need to be set and then track the ball." So it was a good pickup, and I was glad I could facilitate it. That the plan in this presentation was to have you pick that up, but uh, we won't be able to do that. Okay, so now we have that on-field performance piece. Um, respect the fact that the umpire, you know, don't get in their head pre-game, they're preparing, they want to do their best. So give them some room right there. Um, observe pre-game, game and post-game. Uh, let them know you're, in, you're watching, you're observing all their interactions with everyone. And that even includes your member associations. You know, our PW and OA, OA and OR here in Ontario, oh, they do a fabulous job of running their sports and <laughs> they volunteer hours and hours. And you know what? Interact with them. And they, I see an umpire going over and talking with them and introducing themselves. And that's all part of what it means to be a leader and umpiring is, is leader. Again, remember that theory of three, three areas to focus on, not 10 different areas. So when you're evaluating them, you've got your notes, you know what the three things are, focus on that because those are the three areas that that umpire will definitely want feedback on. Now, you can give them feedback on lots of other areas and if you're evaluating them, you're gonna to have to measure them against the criteria as it's listed, but those three areas are definitely is, are important areas that they wanna know about. Now, the question always comes up, should you be visible on the diamond when you're doing evaluations or in the ballpark? And my, my answer to that is good luck trying to be invisible because the umpires will know exactly where you are. Uh, the, the, once you walk into the ballpark, they will know where you are. So. Uh, I, I, you know, if I wanted to see an angle, I would move to a position where it was, be it in the outfield, be it behind a bench. Sometimes I want to hear the chatter of the coaches, that sort of stuff. And um, uh, so visibility, that one's up to you. Um, sometimes on the diamond, things will happen and it could get really bad. Uh, you know, your, your, your leader supervisor uh, avoid intervening, inter, intervening in the situation. Now, of course, it's dependent, but uh, you know, if you're a youth umpire and and they're uh, being abused and anything like that, we're not going to tolerate that in any, any way. But you know, if an umpire's made a call and somebody's on them, and that uh, you know, uh, the umpire uh, is going to get some feedback on how they han handled it. But you don't want to come off the um, I have heard of situations where uh, evaluators are calling umpires over to the fence and telling them kind of what to do and stuff like that. That's a no-no. Okay, so now we've got the debrief. We're towards the, uh, they've done their job on, on the diamond. Uh, avoid any interaction when they're coming off the field. But keep in mind that sometimes umpires need immediate gratification given the, how intense the game is. 
you know, so, so you, you know, you've, you've handled, you're handling a game, let's say you're the plate umpire and you've had some um, uh, intense competition and uh, you've managed to uh, keep the coaches in the boxes and the players in the, in the benches. And uh, it was just one of those games, one of those, you know, once in a lifetime games and you've done a great job you come off and, you know, the umpire in chief or your supervisor doesn't say anything to you. Well, you know what, then you get feeling like, what have I done wrong or I didn't do something. So in a situation like that, you know, a, a, a comment about, uh, you know, lots of game control in that one, you didn't run into too many problems, you know, comment like that is very, uh, very effective. Notice I didn't use good game. I'll get to that in a moment. Okay, make if you're going to meet with them, make sure you you do that. That's for sure. Make sure you address those three areas. Um, I mean, things can come up as an evaluator, but you you told you're going to meet with them. So make sure you do. Um, <clears throat> when you're meeting with them, if they can have somebody present, that would be ideal. If you do have a deputy. Um, if, if not, if you're, if you're doing it and it's in the parking lot type of thing, just make sure there's people around who can, can see, um, no one can really attest to what's being said other than yourself and the umpire. But, um, sometimes it's good to ask the umpire if they have a trusted friend that they would like to have present. Uh, and then talk about how you're going to track them and support them as the season goes on those areas that you're going to give them feedback on. And then two, um, we need feedback on how we're doing. So, you know, it's good to mention that there will be a process where they can share on how you're doing, be it, you know, John sends an email, Jamie sends an email, that sort of stuff, okay? Okay, um, situation here, an example, uh, umpire is unhappy with their forced calls. We, we talked about that and, and how to deal with it looking for the plan that's uh what you talked about in that pre-evaluation or pre <clears throat> every time you go and you put that evaluator's hat on you're going to decide whether you're assessing the umpire or you're evaluating them evaluating will lead to some kind of rating some kind of score assessment will uh could lead to that too but it's it's more collaborative and you have to decide which is which, depending on the uh, umpire you have, depending on um, the tournament, those kinds of things. We talked about having a plan. Sometimes things don't go as planned. If they don't go as planned, as the evaluator leader, you've got to figure out what went wrong. Uh, sometimes the person being evaluated walks out, you know, and who's fault is that? Well, you know, you have to take on that responsibility. All right, so a simple plan would be, okay, we're watching you for the leading edge. The umpires will have a, a priority angle. You know, these are two areas that we're gonna, we're gonna look for. Um, I'm watching for the leading edge all weekend. Today, all the umpires, I'm looking for the priority angles. Those are planned for your evaluation with the umpire or umpires. So our Softball Ontario evaluation form, as you can see, you're familiar with it. There's the categories. We're just gonna go a little bit deeper with those categories. That's the back page, moving from one level to another. <clears throat> all of these areas on here are definitely divided into knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And when you, the way knowledge, skills, and attitudes present themselves is in the form of ability, the ability of the umpire. Now, when we take a look at this Softball Ontario form and we look at dress, rule, knowledge, and umpire signals, what are we talking about? Is that knowledge? Skills or attitudes, confidence, hustle, approachability, demeanor. Those are all terms used on the actual form. What are we measuring? 
knowledge, skills, or attitudes. And finally, rule enforcement, teamwork, support, timing, movement, is that knowledge, skills, or attitude. I would say that this dress rule knowledge, that's all about knowledge. Your confidence, hustle, that's your attitude, and then your whole set of skills. So you can see on that evaluation form, you're measuring three areas. Okay, so you say, Jamie, I want to see uh, game management, diamond presence, okay? So notice it wasn't just game management, it was your diamond presence, and then you can narrow that down. As a skill, I want to see the execution of the overhand out. Again, a skill. Notice not how you make your calls, for being very specific, execution of the overhand out. And then we're measuring knowledge around your three umpire positioning. We're gonna be looking at how you rotate. You should have some goals for yourself too, or will you demonstrate if need be? Will you practice, do lots of evaluations, get better at it? And then will you seek some feedback? So clear expectations for yourself and the umpire. Okay, so in this video here, single most important video, uh, variable is the umpire. And we cannot lose track of that at all. This video here, I had a brawl that broke out at Canadian Championship and the three umpires handling it, you really get a sense of just how important their role was. But we don't have that. Okay, the power of praise, one of those 10 essential elements for great evaluators. You'll notice on this one, I, I've given you basically four, five areas to follow, authentic, specific, and immediate. And I provided some examples. So on this example here, I want you to pay attention. I'll read these to you, but what am I not saying? You move with efficiency, purpose, and presence when getting to your calling position. The angle at which you made the call seemed to be obstructed. Everyone in the park knew it as a safe call. So I'm describing it when I talk about you move with efficiency, purpose, and presence when getting your calling position. That's what I saw. That's authentic. I'm very specific. That's how the umpire moved. Provide it as quickly as you can after the game, the game, and it's it's respectful being clean and private. I'm not saying you move well, you move good. That's a good positioning. I'm not saying, I'm not using words like good. Angle at which you made the call seemed to be obstructed. I'm not saying you made a bad call. I'm saying you seem to be out of position. Tell me about it. Let's explore it. Try to stay away from those subjective comments such as good and bad. It's hard to do, especially when they're doing a great job out there. It's really hard. You just want to say, fantastic. That was a wonderful game. But be specific. You had. Lots of opportunities for game control. I saw smiles on the coach's faces. Your partner responded to every question you had, every sign you flashed down, they responded. Everyone in the park knew it was a safe call. It's another way of saying your, your voice is loud and clear. It's a good call. No, we're not saying it's a good call. We're just describing it in a specific manner. Okay, we're not gonna do that video, unfortunately. Okay, uh, sometimes you definitely have to filter when you start to um, um, have negative situations out there. And um, again, you wanna be authentic, you wanna be, you wanna still follow that, uh, that mantra around um, the strategy around being authentic, specific, and immediate. Um, but focus on what matters the most because you want your umpire to come back to umpiring. 
You know, they they want to be they've got to be more excited about doing the next game. You know, and that's the challenge as a, as an evaluator. Ignore the trivial and the obvious. Give the umpire what matters most. And this is a tough one, and it takes a long time to look to 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 focus on these kinds of things. Um, and and it takes a lot of practice, and it takes that pregame conferencing with your umpire to determine. But sometimes, yeah, you know, there was a bench brawl. Is that the first thing you're going to talk about? Um, there was a hit batter. Is that the first thing you're going to talk about? Is there were two ejections. Is that the first thing you're going to, those are the obvious. Are they trivial? No. But are they first thing you're going to talk about? You know, the old, Sometimes you miss things or incidences and circumstances on the diamond that are more important than others. And of course, this will differ from level. Always, always, always. I've got a couple of situations here. I was hoping we would have some um, uh, to discuss here. I'll let you read that one. The umpire comes to you and they're upset because they ejected the coach. You know it was interference, but the umpire called obstruction. This has happened to us all. Two umpire system and you get plunked by a throw from right field going into third. Coaches leaving the boxing, uh, coaching box. Interferes and then doesn't interfere. These are pretty significant situations and how are you gonna deal with them in a dignified, respectful way to the umpire? Here's a strategy. First base coach, adamant, need help. When you're on your debrief with the, that play has happened, you're doing your debrief, just say to the umpire very clearly, Mark, what's up? What's up on that play? That play where the um, coach you ended up ejecting. What's up with that one? Let them talk. They'll tell you. Let them describe it. They got to get it out. Facilitate self-assessment if you can. What went right? What went wrong? When did it start to go wrong? What caused you not to put the brakes on the ejection? Is it a knowledge, skill, or attitude? You do differently. All right, what's the next steps? How do we go about changing this? Help the umpire find the answers. Don't steal their learning by telling them what they need to do. Of course, you have a certain script that you want them to follow and a certain plan, but <laughs> that's your plan. And it may be very effective. And if you want them to follow it, facilitate them bringing out the answers and it's likely they will be doing it. And then you can add your own little tidbits of information. <clears throat> So obstruction. Oops, sorry. Oh, same kind of idea. Obstructions declared. You knew it was interference. Again, what's up? You had an obstruction call out there. Tell me about it. Okay. Let them describe it. Let them. They'll probably tell you that they, they, they got it mixed up. Follow that strategy right there, and. You, you, it's less work on you and they'll find their own answer and you will facilitate that, that answer. It's a great feeling. That's a couple, same, same, with two, same with the other examples. Evaluating is really about learning. It really is. And I was talking to Jamie beforehand. <laughs> we were laughing about it. Well, not laughing. It was kind of sad, but couple evaluators are, are more there for their own purpose and their own own ego and that sort of stuff. But you know, if they're not learning out there, the umpires, your 
evaluating and you're assessing, if they're not learning, I don't know what you're doing. Um, you really got to reflect on your practice. And, you know, yeah, learning takes time and it's measurable, but if you can give them three aspects to practice, how are you going to get them to where they need to be? And that's what it's about. I like this. I read, do you as an instructor evaluator hold up your level one or level three sign and watch umpires race towards the finish as best as they can? Or do you help them develop the skills, knowledge, and attitudes do they need? So the 10 undertakings that matter the most, that's them. That's, those are the ones that we talked about. I'm sorry about the video tonight, but finally, final words. Practice, evaluating, you'll have lots of opportunities. Cherish it, but lots of practice. You'll get better and better. Find a good mentor, be a mentee, find a coach who can help you. Value, appreciate, respect the umpire you're working with. Establish, develop, and nurture those relationships. Walk the talk at all times, all times, all times. Um, and then look forward, not backwards. So I want to say thanks to everybody. Um, I'm not sure if there's any questions, but I think we've got, uh, oh, good. We've got five minutes, uh, sounds like, or any comments. There's a lot of experience out there. Uh, Jamie and um, okay. there is a questions popped up here from Daryl Way. Um, oh, okay. Actually, Daryl, if you want to turn your microphone on, um, ask the question. Hey, hey, Mitch. Hey, Daryl. Good to hear um, you. <laughs> nice to hear you too. <laughs> I, I have a question about when you were saying you wanted um, a third party at the evaluation or debrief. Um, I'm not quite sure I understood that. Like, a, and you even mentioned a good friend. Is this a new practice we're developing or? Well, I think it's a safe practice, uh, Daryl. It, it's sometimes as an evaluator, um, we don't want the evaluator, the evaluator may say something uh, they may back it up, um, and then it's taken out of context, and sometimes by the by the umpire receiving it. And if there's a third person there, that person can um, can attest to, and you know maybe the evaluator was being mean and abusive, and and this needs to be uh, there needs to be a witness for it. So uh, that's where I was going with that whole third person. Um, sometimes it's, it's a scary situation having, um, um, uh, an evaluator, uh, 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 evaluating you and you might feel safer, uh, having someone else, uh, with you while they're talking about your skill set. So, uh, do you see kind of where I'm, I'm coming from yeah. with that one? Yeah, I get it now. I, it perfectly makes sense. Thank you, Mitch. I was just a little confused, but it makes sense. Oh, I'm glad, Daryl, you asked that. Thanks, because others would have, have the same same feeling. Um, it's protection of yourself and protection of the umpire. Perfect. Thank you. Great job, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. Miss you guys. Anybody else have any other questions? In that, in that, in that regard, uh, Mitch, if the uh, if the umpire that you're debriefing, if he's not uh, comfortable having anyone else uh, in the evaluation, like while you're debriefing, uh, <clears throat> would he more or less call the shot on whether someone else would be present at the time, or would you? sort of lean towards doing that yourself? Well, I would, Brian, lean towards uh, asking the umpire and saying, um, Brian, do you mind if I, if I have Jamie here present uh, with, with me? Uh, he's I'm mentoring him as an evaluator, and um, I'd like him to be present here. 
Um, and I have been in those situations at Canadian Championships, Brian, and, and maybe you have too. Um, not, not fully knowing the individuals, like I might know them um, in Ontario through my colleagues and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I, 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 if, if you as an evaluator felt you felt safer having somebody with you, um, I would say ask them and if they ask the umpire and if they're not okay with it, um, then, then you're, you're going to have to find another way to do it. But don't forget, Brian, you would have covered that in the pre-evaluation stage when you met with that umpire and, and said, I'm going to be having some, someone present, but okay. we all know Saturday morning, you, you evaluate a couple of games and, you know, you're trying to be positive and, and nurturing, but, you know, there's some major faults out there. And now the umpire feels that you may be picking on them. And uh, now you got to meet with them Sunday and you, you know that, you, you know, you're not their favorite person, but you have a responsibility so you want to you want to have somebody with yourself, I would say. Good question. Thanks. Thanks. Th uh, thanks, Mitch. No, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions from anybody? The biggest one I get, uh, Jamie, I, I I always struggled with, and it's a good question. Is that is that whole? What are you going to evaluate me on? Is it just what I did on Friday night? Okay, I, I misinterpreted the illegal pitch. So now on Sunday on my evaluation, it shows up as a, you know, uh, an issue. And um, I, I think you can use, it's another session that we can do around how to address that and how to use language that acknowledges the growth from Friday night to, to, to Sunday. So that's usually one of the questions. Okay, so just a word for-, for there. Yep, go ahead. I'm sorry. I totally agree with you there, Mitch. I, I think that's a good point. Yeah, thanks. So what I was going to say is if anybody is interested in moving through the ranks as an evaluator or an instructor, either way, please contact me and we'll do our very best to get you evaluated as an evaluator or an instructor, whatever we need to get you to move through your uh, your levels as an instructor evaluator. Just email me and we'll try our best to get somebody there to help you. Um, I'll help as much as I can, but I keep a crazy schedule in the summer. So you may have to come to a ball tournament that I'm doing and evaluate me as a way of learning how to be evaluators. So um, that works too. So, but if you wanna move through, by all means, get in touch, in touch with me and we'll, see what arrangements we can make. And Jamie, I, I, I neglected to add the same that uh, I, I, I should have put my email up there, but I, I'm, I'm accessible at, at any time. Um, I, I really, um, this is important to me. Uh, it's always, it's become a passion. Um, and so I, any questions along the way, uh, anything that I can help with, um, uh, I, Elbow as a resource immediately. Okay, a couple of things in the uh, in the chat that I think you should know. No one has said great work and always a pleasure getting your experience, view, and perspective. Hmm. And we have another nice note here. I was a hockey referee evaluator for years. This presentation is better than what I have seen in the past. Thanks. So oh, that's wow. that, that's thanks to you, Mitch. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks for those. That, that feedback, um, I, I really want to make a difference uh, and I'm learning as I go too, but with uh, good, good questions and good people, um, it just, it brings my game up and I, I'm always, uh, there's always something to learn. So I appreciate those comments. They, they mean a lot, even more so now uh, as I'm in my 50th year or whatever it is doing this. So thank you, much appreciated. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. We'll uh, we'll end the presentation there. Mitch, if you want to stay on, and John, we'll just hang around here for a minute. Um, but thank sure. you, everybody. Thanks, folks. Good night. Thanks, Mitch.
Thank you, Brian. Take care. Hope to see you on a ball diamond this summer. Well, you 